work with people that are visually impaired, and you learned a little bit about Louis Braille. Tell me a couple yeah. things you learned about Braille. Yes, sir. Uh, that uh, in order, like, to like read in Braille, uh, uh, like, uh, I'm pretty sure that the letters are three D, so you can actually feel them. Yeah, and and America was uh, 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 and America was one of the last was the last country to accept Braille, and France was the first country to accept Braille. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. So Louis Braille was from France. Was he blind himself? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Yes. He, he accidentally like, um, stabbed himself with the eye. Stabbed him his and the, eye with, and like, with a tool or something. And, 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 he, and he got an eye infection. And so it's he was blind on both eyes. Okay. Cool. You guys have been listening to the story, huh? That's really cool. So he basically had an eye infection and it spread to his other. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, interesting. Now, here in this country, the, the leading cause of people that go blind is called something, uh, so, mostly older people become blind because of glaucoma. But for young children, it's, it's another issue, like right when they're born. Okay, so there's a lot of, a lot of ways that someone could become visually impaired and how it impacts them or it affects them. Okay, so I work with students that are visually impaired and blind. I work with them on learning Braille and learning how to use technology. A lot of people that are blind can't see, so we have technology that computers will read out loud. And they can read everything you guys read, but it's all auditory. They hear it with their ears, okay? Or they also can read Braille. And I brought some Braille. You said it's 3D. I brought some Braille for you to look at. As a matter of fact, I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes and then I'm going to blindfold you as if you're blind and you get to try some things like a person without vision would. And then we're going to also pair up in a few minutes. I'm going to show you the best way to walk with someone or to help someone who's blind walk around the school. Okay? It's really fun. This is what my mom said like a few years ago. If I, stop, if, I, uh, if I look at the light too much, I'm going to get blind. I have a really Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. This is the last question, then we'll keep going, okay? I wore glasses when I forgot about my home today, but I, I'm not blind um, to wear glasses. I just have rational detachment. You do? To my right eye. Oh, so do, do you, are you in gym? Do they let you play sports with balls and everything? Yeah. Okay. You have to be careful with that eye, right? Yeah. You don't want to have a, a blow to your head or something. That's important. Okay, well that's interesting stuff, you guys. Um, so I wanted to tell you something about, now you, have you talked about other disabilities in this class? No. Over the summer? No. no. Okay, the important thing to remember when you ever meet someone who's blind or visually impaired, they're just like you, they just can't see. So a lot of times people will say, oh well, that blind person over there. Well, they're a person first. So it's really important to refer, talk about a person first before you talk about their disability. So you probably wouldn't say, oh, that blind person. You would say, the man who has a visual impairment. Okay, so you refer to the person first. That's kind of an important thing for all disabilities. So that you don't, design, you don't define or you don't think of someone in one certain way. Because they really are a person first, okay? Um, it's okay or someone who's visually impaired when you're talking to them. Do y'all know anybody who's visually impaired or blind in your classes? Uh, no. No? No. Well, you, you might, through school, you might run into someone who actually is blind. We have several students in Celine that are visually impaired and blind, okay? So it, it's okay to talk to them and say, okay, did you watch TV last night? Or, um, I, you know, use words that we all use. It's okay to do that. Because some people say, oh, I shouldn't say that. But it's okay to do that. Because that's kind of like whatever the words everybody uses in everyday language. Okay. Um, it's important if you do end up meeting someone. Like a lot of times there's a student over at the high school and he's totally blind. And people come up to him in the hallway. It's really busy and they start talking to him. And when it's really noisy, he doesn't know who who's talking to him sometimes. 
So it's important when you meet someone to say, oh, hey, George, this is Kathy. How are you doing today? And let them know who you are instead of just starting to talk. Because you'll understand that when you put the blindfold on, when you hear people talk and you're not sure who's talking to you or if they're talking to somebody else. So introduce yourself to someone. Also, um, uh, this happens at the high school a lot and at the middle school. If you see someone walking down the hallway with a cane, and people that are blind or visually impaired use canes to um, protect themselves when they're walking, uh, if you're sitting in the hallway, just make noise so they know you're there and they can go around you. A lot of people get real quiet, and then they run into them. <laughs> and so probably just the opposite, you should get a little bit noisier and they can go around you. And it makes life easier for everybody. So. I also work with students on learning how to get around the community with a cane. I have a young man right now I'm working with and we're going into downtown Saline and he's learning how to cross streets. Because one day he's going to take buses and cabs and he'll have to go from his home to his work and he's going to have to cross the street. So we're right now working on how to cross streets, listening to traffic. You always, you always, they, for him, he has to listen to traffic pattern and start crossing the street when there's a surge of traffic on the same direction he is. So, and that, also there's a, something in Michigan, there's something in every state called the white cane law. And I'm gonna show you a white cane. Do you remember what the white cane is? We talked about it yesterday. Yes, yes. yes. Have you guys seen one of these before? Oh, what does a white cane mean? It's like a stick where blind people use to like, to like um, feel where they're, where they, they're going. Mm -hmm. so, so if they're just walking without holding on to something, they can just run into stuff. So exactly. using a cane. If, yeah. it's, if it's white, we know that if I couldn't blind. That's right. If I okay. couldn't see. I would hit that chair with a cane instead of my knee, which is really great. And actually, if we have enough time, I was going to have you, with a blindfold on, I was going to have you try out the cane, okay? So the white cane usually has a red tip. It doesn't have to always have a red tip, but typically it should. And it's metallic, so at night when the cars, when they come up, a car comes up to them, it shines really brightly. This whole thing is, is uh, metallic, that's not the word, uh, reflective. And so when the, a car light shines on it, it's really bright. If you've ever seen one, it's like it really pops out and stands out. Mm -hmm. And there's something called the white cane law that if someone is about to cross the street or standing at a corner, drivers have to take every precaution to stop and wait for that person mm -hmm. or there are fines involved. So but if a car you know, goes out in the intersection and thinks, oh, that person's going to get out of the way, that person will have a lot of fines in addition to possibly harming a pedestrian person walking across the street. So I'm going to show you guys, if I can get a volunteer, the best way to walk with someone, okay? The best way to walk with someone if they're visually impaired, okay? So, and you guys talked about Braille a little bit, right? Yeah. Did you, did you, were you able to decode yeah. and write your names? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I have another worksheet that's kind of cool. Um, that you can actually, it's got, got some puzzles that you can figure out by decoding the braille cells, okay? So, I'm going to, actually maybe I could get one of the, the uh, adult volunteers to come up and help me, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna show you if she's my guide and I can't see, I'm blind, okay? She's going to be my guide and I'm going to stand a half a step behind her like this, okay? I'm not going to stand next to her. I'm not going to get in front of her, but behind her, okay? And then we're going to just walk around the room. We're going to walk, let's walk around the table. Okay. And, I'll show you. and when she walks, she needs to make sure she takes me far away from any obstacles. Like there's this camera. Mm -hmm. No, you're, I'm going oh, to you, hold on to you. you. Hold on. Okay. I'm going to hold on to okay. you. So There's I'm, a camera, and she just takes me far away from it, okay. which is what you guys are going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's go back to back the front. Here. Yeah. So I'm going to stay a half a step behind her. You're going to remember that you're double wide. There's two of you. 
You want to hold on to your partner's arm. Let's go over here so they can see. Okay. Like this, like, and if she holds her arm close to her body, when you hold your arm close to your body, That's I better. can see when she's moving back and forth and up or down. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hold on to your partner like you're holding a can of uh, water. Okay. Instead of doing this or holding on holding hands, you're going to hold to the back of the arm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're holding the back, you're half a step behind, and you're double wide. Okay. And we're going to practice that in just a minute. I'm going to have you guys pair them up. Um, we'll practice that okay. and then we'll swap our partner and then if we have time we'll um, use the cane and then I can come back and talk to you a little bit about Braille and some of the devices we use. I even brought a Brailler. Have y'all, did y'all see a picture of a Brailler? No. Where'd I put it? Right there I think. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so we'll come back and this is the machine that actually makes the dots that you can make on paper, okay? But let's go now and practice walking with a partner and making sure they're safe, okay? So I'd like to, um, can you help or, no, you don't, you don't work here, okay? So I'd like for each of us to take, I'll take four okay. and then each of you take two. Looks like there's an odd number so one of us can walk. Okay. With you two want to come with me? Sure. Or you two? Yeah. Um, Benji and Evie. Benji. Okay. Benji and Evie. Alright. Evie, come with Benji. So we are going to practice. These are much better than what we did yesterday. We, we used uh, scarves to uh, actually put around their eyes. That's and okay. they Somebody tried to feel objects and guess what they were. Oh, you've done a lot. Yeah, but the scarves actually were slipping. So this is much better. I have one of that. Do you have one too? Is it like an eye mask? Yeah, it's like an eye mask. My mom used one of those to sleep. Yep. They they give those on the airplanes a lot. So you, if you when you start, you're going to be the person who's visually impaired, and you're going to be the guy, and make sure you do what we talk about. Okay. And then let's see. Oh, there's four. She's I only see light. Like right there. I'll give you another one. I only see like like that. Sorry. I'll give you another one. On an airplane. On an airplane. I see light. Can you see? That's me.